If I can. 20% more. What does she do? Favors cost 30% less. Issued passports are valid for one month less. 60,000 at the end of every month. You lose 0.2% rating. Team members are paid 50% less at the end of every month. Gain 200,000. Your rating losses after events are increased by a third. 200,000. Losses are increased. Okay. So I think I'd say she's just better than Joe. Uh, okay. Team members are paid 30% less at the end of every month. Increased stress, though. definitely increase people's stress. Oh, he's already treasure sector. No. So it's so like it's just so hard to remember. Like maybe that's good. Then we need a way to decrease stress. Yeah, I think this is better. I have no one else that's increasing stress, right? That 250,000 is really good. Plus another 200,000. And that doesn't apply to these things. So I feel like I want to maybe change him out. 30,000 for 0.3. Three. I wonder if this applies to that bill that I, I'm about to sign. stress again. I don't know. Will seems to be pretty good in that spot. This is good too, though. The question is like, is that is 30% more than 30,000? Probably is. Can I see how much I'm making? Plus 450,000. So that's... Uh, 45. That's like 12,000 or something like that. I don't like doing math. I don't like doing math live. I can't, it stresses me out. I know people are watching me do math. I actually have a minor in math. <laughs> and a degree in computer science. I could do math. I just get stressed. Um, but I know people are watching. So Tian is pro. Hold on, uh, let me just check it again. I'll do it. I'll do it. I'll do. I'll do the freaking math. So it's thirty percent, right? So ten percent of this is uh, ten percent of this is not forty-five thousand, right? It's four thousand five hundred. And times three, that's, yeah. The 30,000 is going to be more. I believe. You guys can correct me if you want.
So I'm cool with this. If maybe Will can go... 250,000 is a lot. And then who isn't assigned? Increased stress. Wow, that's a lot of money, but I'm losing a lot of ratings doing that. Let's just do it for a little while. Oh. So can I see? Okay. Man, maybe I should just steal the painting. But maybe this is a setup? Con men. Nah. Let's just go. So who's getting paid the most? Will? And then Conrad. Pal, I don't know how you're managing to run a country if you can't pull off a, even a simple heist. The maiden on the white horse remains in the gallery, and your bottle of whiskey is sitting in my bar. I don't care. That's a steep drop, everybody. So minus 4.7. Good. Minus one stress. Minus two. May 2022. Okay. So, uh, balance at start of turn. 4.4. Whew. I like that cash. Unload state warehouses. We made 500,000 plus 2.2%. Sir, our garage sale was a resounding success. We sold everything, drugs seized, clothes, guns, the whole works. That's what good advertising, reliable tech, and below market prices can do. Some of the proceeds will even go to your charity foundation. So this is good. We should send them to do this every time. Oh yeah, rescue Wanda Humphrey. Mr. President, I do not even want to know what your person did. I'd rather sleep soundly at night. What matters is that it worked! Yes! The boy who had blackmailed me sent me a huge basket of flowers with... Excuse, oh, this is Wanda. I didn't do my Wanda voice. <laughs> it's... I've been, do, I've been recording for an hour 45 minutes. It's actually quite exhausting to uh, voice act for this long in a row, uh, to be honest. Um, so sometimes I get... I'm, I'm off with my voices. Vuelta Javinez, Secretary of the President of Guatemala. Minus 3%, but plus 1 million. Mr. President, the interview was a resounding success. Your man asked all the right questions. She's a lady. Thank you very much. Uh, with President Cabero acing each and every one of them, the people of Guatemala were well and truly enraptured. Unlike your journalists, those guys have no respect, only a big trap. Not to worry, though. President Cabero sends you his best regards, along with a donation to your charity. Shall I put some incense here in the Oval Office, Mr. President? No, that's okay. Oh, that's giving him stress every time he does it. Wolfgang Stoffels. Sir, the students from Arizona who we provided with a grant uh, to their research spent a month in hospitals trying to record the exact moment when the soul leaves the body. They weighed, they measured, they analyzed, and nothing. Not even the uh, acclaimed 21 grams. Either there is no soul, or the entire test group is soulless. <laughs> and the journalists did not fail to attract people's attention to how the government spends, spends budget money on dubious initiatives. They do not understand that the truth is only revealed to the brave. George Vershbaugh, Deputy Secretary of Treasury. 
Mr. President, our intelligence put a lot of effort into gathering data on the other president's financial status. Unfortunately, one of our agents was caught in France making bank statements. I can only hope the situation published in La Gazeta will not aggravate the relations between us and the president of France. That's really bad. 60, we're almost at 67. But plus point three. Jerome Wilson, White House Butler. Sir, the reception of the Arab prince was splendidly. Mr. Abdul Hayid was very impressed and tweeted he always appreciated other people's passion for sports. And your love for New York's coyote, for New York coyotes was fervent and obvious. I did not expect to see such integrity from a baseball fan. Ellie. Honey, our best chef spent two hours examining the pastry photo and had their verdict. The jam was made from wild strawberry. I guess that added little to the case, but the press has appreciated our help. Sands wrote that unlike the police, they were at least doing something. Ellie. Remember Mike Ribikov, our most honest and bland candidate running in Texas? He looked certain to win the congressional election, but the race has turned against him. I don't know what he spent his money on, but it certainly wasn't on a stylist. His approval ratings are through the floor, and history is repeating itself. We need to get involved now, or it's one less vote for the amendment and more wasted money. Mike spends a lot of his time at the liberty of Congress, so we might find him there. Alta says, Cowboy, work has become a living nightmare. If you keep piling jobs on me like this, I'm going to be so exhausted. I could let my guard down and cough up something nobody should be hearing. I know a lot of stuff like that. Let's just avoid the risk and get me a long vacation somewhere nice, okay? <sighs> no. Roger that, Mr. President. I didn't think it would turn out like this. He left, or he didn't leave. I'm gonna postpone for this for as long as possible. Our survey revealed that 57% of responders would like the capital transferred from Washington, D.C. to another city in the U.S. A popular trio is Austin, Los Angeles, and Arkville. Hmm, isn't that that guy's hometown or whatever? Archaeologists are excavating graves on Anako Island. Will they find something more interesting than bones and arrowheads? We've already seen enough of those. Antonio says, My message is for all the journalists. Leave my father alone. He's an old man. He needs rest. Does not need to be interviewed about me. Will says, Sir, it's definitely Joe. You should have seen their eyes when I asked point blank, Did you steal my pen? One guilty look and they ran out of the room and slammed the door. Wanda says, I'm not sure I'm going to be able to win in my district now, Mr. President. Without your help, I'm afraid I won't stand a chance. I promise that if I get reelected, I'll do everything in my power to help your amendment get passed. I've seen a lot in my day, but I've never amended the Constitution. I want to make some sort of difference in Washington before I finally get sick of the damn place. Three more. We're halfway there. 11 months left. Sir, I regret to inform you that I am ending our professional relations. If you want me for this job again, please take measures to pull up your approval rating. Buddy, I dropped by Congressman Ken Verbetsky's place yesterday for a few hands of poker, and the guy mentioned he'd really like to see you. His new project has hit some kind of a wall, and I'm sure we can sort things out for him. That'll get us his vote, and he won't even want money for campaigning, as the card sharping bastard really took me to the cleaners. I'll text you the address of our private poker room. Ellie. Darling, you developed a lot of useful connections during the first year of our presidency. You've mingled with reporters, judges, policemen, and civil servants. You were introduced to Ortha Chambers, shook hands with Wolfhide, and rubbed shoulders with Prince Robert. Why not use networking to acquire a pocket congressman or a congresswoman here in Washington? Surprisingly, there are not many popular candidates this year. We might as well appoint a personal flunky. We have plenty of experience and we have people who can take care of the election campaign. I am sure you have a reliable person among your staff who will fit snugly into a chair in Congress if we support them. Oh, pick someone from our staff. Cool. Debbie Shop, a lawyer. 
Hello, after I graduated from Cambridge, I sent my resume to everyone, but no one answered me. Employers in America today are looking for non-existent people. Yesterday's graduates who have vast experience in model looks. Wake up, such people simply don't exist. This is when I decided to contact you directly, Mr. President. You are free from stupid stereotypes, so maybe you will hire me, since no one else would. I'm a top-notch lawyer. I'm sure I will be useful to your team. Let's take a look at her. one Arm Bandits, The Last Idealist, Inconvenient Old Man, Expose the Double Agent, Suggest the Candidate, Searching for Candidates, Northwest. That's a lot of stuff. I want to take a look at her. Also, I'm like dropping really hard in the approval ratings. 2 million signing bonus, 293,000 a year. She's, she successfully defended her first case when she was 18. When she proved that her younger sister hadn't stolen anything from the local supermarket. After she graduated from Cambridge, she had trouble holding on to a job. Eventually, she took up work in the law department of an oil company where she worked on legal actions against environmentalists. Pardon me. Uh, okay. Well, I guess we lost Sasha. So she might, she might be useful. I'm gonna have to look at this again because I'm just losing too much of an approval rating. Two hundred fifty thousand for one point four. This is a much. This is a really good return on my investment. That's not so great. I think I probably have to change Will out. That's just too much. Actually, Alta is much worse. Is there anything I can do to increase my ratings? Yeah, Conrad has the contraband items thing. Okay, let's put Conrad back in there. So that's at least 2% less. I might honestly just do something like that. Let's just do something that's like... Oh, he's already there. Forty percent more. Let me take a look. So that would be half of that. Uh, Two hundred twenty-five thousand. So it'd probably be like a hundred and something thousand. Almost two hundred. I think I was wrong on my math before. <laughs> I should just do this. Uh, oh. You know what? It's fine. We'll figure out the. We'll do something. Vindicate the police. I don't think I'm going to be able to do this. That would be nice, though. We'll get this back. One arm bandits. Oh, look who's granted us with the highest honor. Ken, meet the president himself. Decided to join the games today? Ah, oh, Mr. President, nice to meet you. The stakes are sky high tonight. Two presidents at the same table. Nobody bluffs like us. I'm going to have a drink before we start. So you two can talk business. Mr. President, I am not surprised you like poker. 
I look at you and I see a true gambling man. Of course, people who don't take risks can't become presidents. You're right. Real politics is poker, and I know all about poker. I know the grand VIP casino chain. My casinos are known and loved all over the world. I own. I think I said I know. Although lately, things haven't been going so well. A familiar story, speaking as a businessman. You must understand, I was going to be my... It was going to be my crowning achievement. And it all went wrong. I was to build a giant gaming center on Anaho Island. Islet VIP. A huge eco-friendly building would rise right from the middle of Pyramid Lake. The only freestanding body of water in all of Nevada. Imagine a wooden exterior beneath a solar panel system and countless other pleasures for all the most socially responsible gamers. It was to be a mecca for eco-friendly roulette, poker, and blackjack enthusiasts. It took years and millions of dollars to prepare for the project, but construction suddenly came to a halt. Do you know why? Eco-activists got involved? Haha, <laughs> actually, they're fine with it. It's even worse than that. Workers were digging a route for the water main and stumbled across an Indian burial ground. That's one thing my architect didn't account for, on an island surrounded by miles of water. The whole area was immediately declared a historical and cultural site. Construction was frozen and the island was fenced off. The National Congress of Native Americans intervened and then the story hit the newspapers. There was no way to cover it up. What did the court say? I haven't even been to court. My lawyer says it's useless without the support of the Native American Congress. Construction was already half legal on a protected area. I don't need to explain to someone like you, but this problem has to be solved some other way. Did you try to talk to them? The state just sent me packing. That's why I went, I want a seat in Congress. Then those puffed up suits won't be able to brush me off so easily. The director of that fucking Native American club is a moron too. All he can do is mutter nonsense about ancestors and the soul of the dead. I don't have enough money left over for a decent bribe. I invested my last dime in Islet VIP or Islet. Islet? Islet? I get the picture. Mr. President, my investors are shaking me down. My construction project is frozen. All my accounts are frozen and we have an election campaign coming up. You're my last hope. Who better than the president to know which strings to pull? I promise if you help me, I won't forget. You will have my vote no matter what. I'll see what I can do. I look forward to hearing from you, Mr. President. Buddy, we are helping face friend Ken Verbitsky with his unfinished casino. I have a couple ideas of what we could do, but first I'm playing blackjack with that cute dealer. This one here. So we've got like, I think we have it. Yeah, Eclipse of the Diamond Moon. Brother, I hear you have a meeting in Glover Park. Mind if I ride in the company car? Wait, what am I picking now? I think I, if I say yes, he can have a ride. Even though we're saying we mind. Is that going to lower stress? Okay. I'm sorry to be such a problem, but Will is acting like a complete idiot. The whole office is getting sick of all the whining and complaining and suspicions. If you don't want our your other employees to quit, you should kick Will the hell out. Ellie. I've been working so much lately, I can't even relax, hun. Even Clint's thousand-year-old meditation technique just makes my head pound worse. Ever since I was a kid, the only thing that's ever been able to calm me down is making pottery. Remember those vases from my old house we used to go to before the wedding, hun? Uh, you had a good laugh at them back then because they seemed to, ahem, <clears throat> phallic to you. I made most of them when I was 15. 
It was a tough age, but I think making pottery again could really help. I realize I don't have time to drive around all over town, right? So I want to build a pottery studio in one of the rooms in the White House. Sure, we'll have to buy a lot of equipment, install a chimney for the kiln, get a ton of fire safety forms filled out, yada yada yada, but in the end, it'll help us both. What do you say, hon? 100000 seems like a small price to pay for your beloved wife's spiritual equilibrium. Why don't we find the closest pottery studio to the White House and rent the whole thing so you can work there whenever you want? Yeah. Maybe you're right, hon. That'd be easier for everybody, and then nobody will be able to say we're wasting taxpayer money. Thanks for doing this for me. I'll go tell the reporters to expect an exhibition of the First Lady's ceramic masterpieces. Good! Ratings bump! An exhibit. Ah, it's not that much. 200,000? The exhibition of the First Lady's pottery was stunning. Experts noted an attention to detail rarely seen in amateur pottery. First Lady can now add pottery to her long list of talents. That was totally worth it. Buddy, you don't need to, to me to tell you that Monger and other establishment agents from the Secret Service are uh, our natural enemies. But tell me, do you remember a guy named Dean May? He's a child of Monger's. Turns out Monger is pushing his son into Congress, allegedly much to his kid's displeasure. I'm going to investigate what's going on. What if we can benefit from this story? Russell Lynn, Administrative Policy Advisor, says... There is a petition circulating online to move the capital to New York City, sir. The petitioner's main argument is that NYC is synonymous with the U.S. all over the world. In fact, a lot of people already think it's the capital. It's also the biggest city in the country, and it's got Wall Street, too. I'm certain that combining the political and financial centers of the country is a terrible idea. We've got to put a stop to this. Should we start a petition against the petition? No. I have a feeling we were supposed to pick yes there. Okay. 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 Your foundation may get a new recurring donor for seven million. I'm not going to be able to do this. Tony is negotiating with Warren Monger, the father of Dean May, a, a congressional candidate from Washington in Georgia. Ellie is looking for a potential ally in Georgia. Save a pol uh, political loser's Texas campaign before he chalks up another failure. Let's see what we can do. The last idealist. Hello, Mike. Oh, uh, well, well, hello, it's you. I'm, I'm sorry. I, I couldn't see your face in these reading glasses. I should have recognized you right away, Mrs. Ellie. Mr. President, how nice to see you both. You look great, Mike. Oh, uh, I didn't think so. Really? It was the truth. He doesn't have to like it. Honey, don't be sarcastic. You're as good as ever with the books. Don't sell yourself short. By the way, how's the congressional campaign going? Think it'll be different this time? Oh, yes. Consistency is, consistency is my uh, forte. As you can see from my mile-long losing streak. <laughs> uh, I hate to break it to you, but I don't think I have any better chances of getting a congressional seat this time around. Oh, I'd be so embarrassed if I failed to live up to your investment. The thing I can't figure out is, uh, how's my opponent's program better than mine? It's pretty clear my plan to ease the tax burden on Texas small business would take the economy to the next level. Maybe it's not your program, Mike. Uh, what is it then? The family curse like my mother says? Or tell me it's my nose. <laughs> uh. It's about the way you look. And I told my mother these striped socks were too revealing for a congressman. Uh, but I've only worn them a couple of times. I don't think they could be the problem. Mike, we think you need a little work on your image. I'd love to set up you with a great stylist. Set you up with a great stylist. The same one who takes care of us. Oh, 
Please don't be offended, uh, but you're talking uh, utter nonsense. I know my constituents like the back of my head. Their weekly sugar consumption, the portion of the family budget they spend on Christmas presents, and the residential termite infestation rates. Believe me, they would never vote for anyone based on the color of their socks. That would be preposterous. You won't lose anything if you try. I will lose the trust of my constituents. Uh, what will they say when they see some fake get selected instead of old reliable Mike? I can't let the people down like that. I'll say the same thing that Uno Ellie said when she left Snake Ridge. Principles are worth more than snorkel gold. So don't even try to convince me. I won't argue with you wonderful people. Yes, that's the Mike I know. Well, take the stylus card just in case you change your mind. Uno Ellie never accepted Snorkel's artifacts. Lest she betray her people. What is he talking about? Is this some story I know I'm not aware of? Betray her people's trust. And I won't either. I'd rather let the money go to a good cause. Oh, Mike, I do hope your constituents come to their senses. You're the most honest politician I know. Well, we tried. <laughs>